like me and Shad were like best friends. We were like brothers. You know, we were pretty much like family. Like I spent a few Thanksgiving with him and his family. Um, if I had an issue, financial problem, or if I had just like personal problems, you know, he was there. You know, he he was always there for me. You smell really good. I heard that no less than six times this week. Looking good is obviously important, but as I've been doing more of these interviews in person, like this one with JTG, smelling good is equally as important, if not more important, than looking good. This is the ticket right here. I've been wearing Pete and Pedro fragrances for the last month, and if you're looking for an awesome cologne at a ridiculously low price, then you should check it out too. They've got three you can choose from. Rebel is inspired by Creed's best-selling cologne, Aventus, which is an amazing cologne, but it is very, very expensive, hundreds of dollars expensive. Then you've got Hero, which is inspired by one of the most popular colognes of all time. Maybe you even wear it, Aqua de Gio. And then there's King, which is their new one, and for me, this has been the one that's turned the most heads. If you're familiar with Creed's Green Irish Tweed, Kind of smells a little bit like that, but at a much better price. Now, I know that buying a fragrance just based on what I'm saying, smell unseen, is you know a little scary to think about, which is boom, why Pete and Pedro came out with these bad boys. They started carrying samples of all three fragrances, so you can test them out and see which one you like best. Normally getting all three samples, and these are big samples, would cost you 24 bucks, but if you click the link below the video and use the code there, You'll get all three for 50% off. Yeah, for 12 bucks. Guys, start smelling good. Or at least start smelling better than you currently smell. My, look at the size of your arms here. This is oh, unbelievable. Thank you, and I'm not flexing. Oh, <laughs> these, these little things? Oh my gosh. These little things, these oh, 24 geez. inch pythons. Oh. <laughs> is that what they are? No, I haven't measured them in a while, but no, I, I have not. It's been, been a be. while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. They're large arms. Thank you. Yeah. For those no. who are inquiring about getting large arms, I'm glad you asked, Chris. Uh, you could go to, uh, well, it's not out yet, but in November of 2009, uh, 2020, I'm dropping my fitness ebook. Uh, the newbie's guide to big biceps. I, so, we, yeah, I didn't. We didn't plan that. Yeah. I, didn't, <laughs> I was just saying, like, look at like a normal human's arms, and then yeah, there's yours. The newbie's guide to uh, to big biceps. So easy a child could follow. So oh. check check the. So are check children gonna have large biceps now? If they want to, I made it so easy so so they could do it too. But uh, no, it's for for guys who uh, who are not familiar with the gym. Yeah. Um, I came up with the book because I get a lot of questions about my arm, my arm workouts, and how do I get my arms so big, and how do I maintain them, so I was like, you know, let me just do this ebook. Oh my gosh. Uh, and um, I'm like a walking billboard with these things, so. Good lord, put those <laughs> things away, my gosh. <laughs> so people will come up to you and be like, dude, your arms are huge? Yeah, you got, your arms are huge, uh, what size are they, how much can you curl, how do I get arms that big, and it's like... I, I I train, you know, when a guy thinks about, like, before he gets into the gym, you know, he's thinking about all the chicks that's going to, you know, gawk you and be like, ooh. It's always the exact opposite. And then the opposite is guys yeah. coming up to you and like, hey, man, come on, shoot, what's your, what's your Instagram? Like, you see, you're <laughs> oh like, whoa, hold on, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're, and I mean this is a great compliment. Your yeah. arms are disproportionately large. Thank you. That's, that's how... <laughs> I get it though. So somebody else it might be offensive, yeah. but I get it. I, I like that. Did you, like, were you the guy in high school with giant arms? Absolutely not. I had I put a I put a picture up on my Instagram. I had puny arms. That's what gave me the uh, the phobia. It was oh. I was traumatized because I had small arms. Okay. And um, I didn't know anything about working out. And then I'm like, when I get older, I'm gonna get big arms. You watch and see. And then. <laughs> Here I am. This is like uh, Arnold was really like, cautious of his uh, or, legs. Uh, yeah, his calves. Oh, his calves. Yeah, he oh, was okay. he was really self conscious about them, uh -huh. and he would wear, he would cut the <laughs> the leg off his pants uh -huh. so that his calves were always on display. Oh, really? So he's like, if they're always going to be out there, I got to work that much harder. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, same thing with me, yeah. I did actually did arms today. I, I train arms twice a week. You're like, before I got here, this shirt had <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> and it, I busted right out. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we met in person on the set of the Talking Shop of Mania 2 Yeah, so we hit it off and everything <laughs> was cool. And uh, we, wanted to, we wanted to actually do this sooner, but you know, yeah. I, I postponed it a little because I wanted to get closer to the uh, date of the book. And Yeah, you've got a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, i got a few things going on, yeah. But it was, it was cool to meet you in person after hearing so much about you. Oh, thanks. 
Thanks, man. I hope it was good stuff. Well, no. <laughs> no, it was all great stuff. Who, okay. who has anything bad to say about okay, you? Okay, great. Yeah, you, and now the fact that we live so close to each other, this was perfect. I know, right? Let's, get your, let's get your arm workout sometime. <laughs> okay. You going to take me up on that? Done. All right. Oh you heard, my you heard him. He said it right here. He's going to do it. Do you think I could? You can hang. I could have those? <laughs> Give me a few months to work with you. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> who, who was it that you were... Like there was a lot of people we were working with on Talking Chavo Mania too. Oh yeah, it was Chavo was there. Yeah, Rocky. It was great seeing Chavo. Um, Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero. Uh, Ty of Valkyrie. Ty of I'm trying to remember the homie from Vegas, the uh, Simbodi. Oh yep, Simbo great seeing yeah, Simbodi. Yeah, it was a. We don't want to give too much away here, <laughs> but it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's, I, I'm it's looking forward to good. seeing that. Yeah, it, it, man. It, those guys make it a little... It's very silly. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's silly, but it's a good thing. I can't wait for you guys to see it and, get, <laughs> and watch the, the, the thread <laughs> of oh what God. these fans got to say after they see that. So you're taking... Are you taking a lot of bookings right now? Yes, I'm taking I'm getting so a lot of bookings. So it's starting to happen again? Yes. Uh, more on the East Coast and the West Coast, because the West Coast is very uh, strict with the, uh, the guidelines and the masks and the social distancing, the whole COVID thing. The East Coast, they, they're, they're still strict with the social distancing, but they're a little bit more lenient than they yeah. are uh, on the West Coast. So you're, I mean, you're obviously like wrestling at every show? I'm wrestling. I'm like, my November bookings are com like booked. Oh, um, wow. I'm even getting bookings for February and, you know, February's starting to fill up. Like, I'm, I'm staying busy. Yeah, they, they, they're loving the new and improved uh, Jay the God, JTG. <laughs> and where did Jay the God come from? Ah. I think a lot of people don't know what JTG stands Yeah, I went through for. a lot of uh, phases in my career. You know, when I first started in OVW, my OVW career, it was... Uh, uh, when I was in promo class, you know, when you're training to be a professional wrestler, every there's a, once a week there's promo class, yeah. and I will always use the MR promo with I'm I'm just too good, you know, and then that became oh, my JTG. name, JTG. JTG. Yeah. And then when I went to WWE, I had to humble myself because I know everybody was gonna ask, what does JTG stand for? And if I said just too good, they're like, oh, you're too good, huh? <laughs> and you know, heat, you know, just for being too confident. So I changed it to just too gangster because it, it fitted my character. So anybody asks me, oh, it stands for just too gangster. Gangster. Now that I'm in a, uh, I'm in a um, more experienced, more confident, um, best shape of my life, and I have a different mindset. You yeah. know, I have like, uh, I control control my own destiny. I don't want to take uh, oh, EC3's uh, uh, control your own narrative. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have I control my destiny. I can I control. I'm in a, I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the uh, the driver's seat right now. Yeah. And I have that godlike mentality. So. Mm. Jay so the God. From just too good to a gangster uh -huh. to now you're a God. There you go. What could you possibly <laughs> ascend to after this? Why well, be a king when you could be a God? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you've been saying. Mm -hmm. If we take this back, I think I was surprised to see that you're working the indie so much right now. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see that wasn't part of like how you came up. You went right into OVW and then uh -huh. from OVW into WWE. I was very, I don't want to say lucky because I was, I was uh, definitely prepared, but not prepared. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. I wasn't mentally prepared, but I was. I was. I had the. I had the ability. You know, we kind of think that uh, we need a few more years. You know, we want perfection. I, I know I did, and um, I, but I was definitely ready. Uh, I had the skills and the charisma. I was entertaining, um, and yeah, I went straight to. At 21 years old, I'm the youngest African American to be signed to WWE on the main roster at 21, wow. year, 21 years old. So how did they find you? OVW was like the main uh, developmental spot yeah. at the time, and um, me and Shad was the tag team. With it. We were the tag team champions, and um, in OVW. In OVW. Yeah. And Al Snow at the time was the um, head writer of uh, of him and Paul Heyman were the head writers of uh, TVs every Wednesday. And we were having matches. We were getting ourselves over. And then we didn't have any opponents one week. And Al Snow said, you know, guys don't always have to wrestle to get over. You know, you guys have personality. You guys, you know, have a good look. You guys have chemistry together. Uh, instead of doing a match this week, I want you guys to go do vignettes or promos. You know, get your characters over. Let the, the fans know who you are. Yeah. And we were like, all right. <laughs> we got a cameraman. And we went out. And we had fun. And that was that is the... Um, after those segments we showed, that one week segment, um, I didn't think anything of it. I was just, okay, that's what got me hired. Wow. Vin, uh, the writers laughed and, and enjoyed the vignettes, and they went back to Vince and said, you got to see this. These guys are hilarious. He recognized Shaq because he knew Shaq because Shaq had been up a few times. And he's like, who's the little guy? 
And um, that's that's his. Uh, Everybody's t- little guy. Yeah, to shout. exactly. Who's the little guy? And he was like, "Oh, that's JCG." Okay, okay. Um, I want to bring him up. I want them on my uh, raw. I want them on raw. And he's like, "Oh, he's not signed." Well, sign him. <laughs> and then I get a call. I'm, I was working at the daycare at the time in in uh, Gold's Gym. I'll never forget that day. I opened up. Yeah. You were looking after kids? Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't know why they did that, but uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. I was great with kids. I love kids. Yeah. Um, I opened up. I sat down. I was waiting for my first kid to come in, and uh, I get a phone call from um, a Connecticut phone number, and I'm thinking it's a rib because they, they, OVW, everybody's just a prankster there, and I've been ribbed before, and I hear the voice, hey, is this is this uh, JTG? <laughs> yeah. Hey, how you doing? We've seen all the work you've been doing down in uh, OVW, down there in Louisville. Um, we want to give you a job. What do you say? And I paused for a second because I was like, <laughs> somebody fuck messing with me. And I'm like, I'm just going to go along with it. That sounds great. And then um, he's like, all right, you know, um, you, you, you're doing good. You and Shad are doing good things. And Vince liked you. And I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to... Uh, um, put you online with my assistant. You have a passport. He started asking me all these questions. And when he put me on hold and I heard like WWE theme songs, I'm like, oh, this is the, oh. This is the legit thing. It's like, yeah, who's going to yeah. go? That's a very elaborate prank <laughs> <laughs> to have like the, uh, to put, be put on hold and you hear like uh, the Rock's theme song. You're like, oh, this is the real deal. Oh, snap. Wow. And I was, I was blown away. I, didn't, I wanted to walk out on them kids that same day, but you know, I had to put my two weeks. I wanted to do things professional. I had to get right. my two weeks notice and everybody was happy for me but if we take it back even before then even getting to ovw for a lot of people that's a huge step yes it was a huge step so did you train at ovw yes before i moved to ovw i was going once a week i took the bus from uh new york yes i took louisville yes (laughs) it was yeah i was that's dedication yes it was like it was like a 16 or 18 hour drive i can't remember um greyhound like after work i worked at the movie theater amc Times square after there i would leave get on the bus after work, and then um, I'll get there like around s- Saturday, um, like Friday, Friday early in the morning. And um, I'll have to sleep in the bus station for like five or six hours before practice start, take a taxi. They didn't have Ubers back then. I took a taxi to the training facility and then um, trained there for like two hours. And then f- I, I think me and Elijah Burke was cool, the Pope now. I was kicking at his house for a little bit. We would chill, watch wrestling, and then he would drop me back at the Greyhound bus station and I'd head back to New York. Were there not wrestling schools in New York? Yeah, but I couldn't find them at the time. I was on the internet looking for wrestling schools and I was looking at the faci- I was just checking. It was like, mm, this is This is wild to me. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I'm glad I didn't go to this, any schools. I was yeah. exactly where I needed to be. The universe put me where exactly where I needed to be, put me with the, with the best tag team partner, and um, I had a great career, so I, don't, I wouldn't change anything. So if it wasn't for Al Snow and OVW's SEO, search engine optimization, <laughs> you never would have gone there. I would have never been, yeah, I would have never been to uh, OVW. Well, actually, you know what made me look at OVW? Um, it was, I got three signs. Uh, I was at a, um, I went to an indie show because I started training in uh, North Carolina. I started training there first. I learned how to bump. But the, 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 I was there for like six months, but out of those six months, I only got like three or four months out of, uh, of training, wrestling training. Okay. And it was just learning how to bump and hit the ropes. And he kind of like took my money and kind of like ran off with it. I'm like, okay. So I had to go back, I had to go back home and re- rethink my whole situation. Um, where was I going with this again? Oh, yeah. So when um, at an indie show in North Carolina, when I, I was helping, like trying to pay my dues, like help put the ring up and take it down. I met uh, a Tough Enough uh, athlete. He was on Tough Enough, and he got kicked out. Not kicked out, but he got eliminated. Yeah, sure. And he was like, yeah, they told me to go to OVW. That's like the best school to go to. And I'm like, OVW? I never heard of it. Yeah, check it out. It's online, man. That's, that's where they, they uh, Brock Lesnar went there, Shelton Benjamin. He started naming all these wrestlers. I'm like, okay, I need to check it out. And I saw it was in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm like, I don't know anybody in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's yeah. like a big culture shock. I'm from New York. And then um, I went to Survivor Series. Uh, it, was, it was an MSG. And they had number WWE New York. Oh, yeah, that was in Times sp- Square. Yeah, yeah, that was the spot to go after, after, after like a, a pay-per-view. Yeah. So me and my friends, we walked all the way down from MSG to Times Square. And then I ran into, uh, what's his name? He was um, a manager for, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Rico. 
Oh yeah, Rico, Rico Constantine. Yeah. Rico, Rico Constantine. I bumped. I, I talked to him. He was he was very friendly. I said, um, so what wrestling school did you go to, man? He was like, oh, I went to OVW. It was down in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm like, that's two. All right. And then um, I think when I, another sign was I went online again. I was like, best wrestling school, <laughs> OVW wrestling. Stars of uh, today's stars tomorrow, like today's superstars tomorrow. Some they had their slogan. I'm like, I'm going to Louisville, Kentucky. That was my wow. Yeah. And now Al Snow owns OVW. Yes, he does. Yeah. And if Al Snow is watching, anytime he needs me to come down there, all you got to do is fly me in, man. No, <laughs> no, free of charge. <laughs> there it is. What, what were some of the early things that really stick with you that Al Snow taught you? Um, Al Snow polished me up. I was trained uh, first by Nick Densmore. Nick Densmore. And then Which is Eugene. Eugene, exactly. Yeah. He taught me how to uh, the bump. Um, like the the, ba- the very basics, yeah. and then I moved on up to uh, Rip Rogers. Okay, he taught me psychology. He taught me how to tell a story in the ring, um, old school. He's like the I have to give it to uh, to Rip Rogers. If anybody who wants to be professional wrestlers, you got to look up Rich R- Rip Rogers. If he's doing a um, a clinic or if he's coming to train, like you know, sometimes uh, trainers will bring him in because he has he's just rich in knowledge with wrestling. He's been doing this for. <laughs> 50, 60 years. Wow. And um, he taught me, and I was one of his uh, favorite students, and he took me under his wing. Even before I got signed, he was like, they're going to sign you. Just don't forget me. <laughs> He's like, don't forget me. And he, he, he trained me really good. He always, and he, uh, I wouldn't say he picked on me, but, I, but since I was like his, uh, his star, star student, he would, um, he, he was a little bit harder on me, but, sure. I, but I appreciate it, yeah, though. Yeah, it made you that much better. Exactly. So just, you, it made me just too good. <laughs> <laughs> you, you came in as a singles wrestler. That was yeah. obviously part of the plan. Uh-huh. At what point did you get paired up with Shad? Well, I got paired up with, I don't know if you remember, my first tag team partner. We will call the Gang Stars. It was with, um, I don't know if you remember, Abraham Washington. He was with WWE. Yeah. yeah. Me and him were a tag team. It was actually his idea. He was like, yo, man, we should... Uh, Come out with these bulletproof vests, wear jeans, Timberland boots. From you, you're from New York. We should rock grills. Nelly at the time had that song, Grills. Let yeah, me see yeah. your grills. And I'm like, it sounds very stereotypical. First of all, I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, Come on, man, you want to make money? You're like, you want to be? You have to be a character. You have to like. Right now, you're just wearing tights. You're just a wrestler. You don't really. We don't stand out. We just wear trunks and 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 um tights. And I'm like, All right, let's give it a shot. And we did the. We didn't have really like characters. We just did the look, but we were very charismatic, and we blew the roof off. Mm. Like, and me, that was me and Abraham Washington, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stick with this. And then after a few months, uh, Abraham Washington had some uh, personal issues going on in his life that prevented him from coming to OVW. And they were, and then I'm sorry, Danny Davis and Al put their heads together. And were like, look, this this young man, he's been he's he's been here every day consistently. He's talented. He's got charisma. He, he's good on the mic. He's young. What can we do with him? You know, he's 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 showing. You know, he's showing. We have to do something with him. And they're like, let's let's put him with Shad. They asked Shad, "Do you how you and JTG get along? Yeah. You want we want to make you guys a tag team." And Shad was like, "Yeah, he's cool. That's like my little brother." Blah, blah blah. And then that was the be the the birth of crime time. Wow. So yeah. if it wasn't for Abraham Washington leaving OVW, <laughs> crime time never would have been a thing. Exactly. What was wow. That's amazing how that all came together. Yeah, at the time, I was like, like at, t- at the time I was hurt. I'm like, because before I got signed, like I say about two or three weeks before that, I was sitting on the sideline. I was actually thinking about like leaving. It was like, because I was just depressed. I wasn't on TV. I'm showing up every week and nothing was going, nothing's happening for me. Um, and I'm like, man, how much longer I'm going to do this? Because I'm working at a daycare. I'm like, I'm getting paid a little below minimum wage. But you had moved <laughs> to Louisville at this point? Yeah, I had moved to Louisville at this point, yeah. So, okay. well, that's a big move in, in itself. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So then you and Chad hit it off instantly? Yeah, we were actually friends before we were uh, a tag team. Yeah, he looked out. He, Chad, always, as soon as I, me and Chad met, I was introduced to him through Elijah Burke at an at a amateur show. He was at my first amateur show. He came to, to watch and see what was, you know, was going on. There's not too much to do in Louisville, so if they have an amateur show, why not show up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, we hit it off right then and there. Wow. And we were cool from there, but we never thought about being a tag team together, you know, because it's because such, such a the um, height difference and experience level, like he was already on on TV, yeah. local TV, and I'm just, you know, learning how to put a match together. So we didn't even, it didn't even cross our minds. 
It might be tough to narrow <laughs> down to just one, but what's your go-to Shad story? Oh, man, we have so many. You going to make me pick one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We have so many and so many I can't tell. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, one of our, well, like one of my uh, favorite pastimes with Shad, you know, we um he love he loved to take edibles. Like he didn't smoke, but he will love edibles. And uh, I remember one time after the show, we had some edibles after the show, and it didn't kick in yet. He was like, hey, "Let's take it so long." I'm like, "I'll take another one." I took another one. I'm like, we was in the hotel room, and it's like, it was like I'm not feeling this, man. He was like. Don't worry, it'll kick in. Cause I'm not used to edibles. And then I'm like, you, I'm like, I'm starting to get hungry. You want to go red lobster? He's like, that's the perfect place to go. <laughs> and then um, I think when we called, when we uh, called the Uber and was waiting for it, it I was like, ooh, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to Red Lobster and we were high and we were just enjoying life and just talking about how good life is and enjoying those uh, uh, cheddar biscuits at Red Lobster. <laughs> that so good. And then that became like, uh, if there was a Red Lobster around, we will, uh, we will do some edibles and go to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> so that became the routine. Yeah, it became one of our, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. And munchies. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah the edibles would get you the munchies, and we would just be in our hotel rooms and our boxes. Just <laughs> He'll be on his laptop uh, working on his movies, and I'll be watching TV and just... Zoned out. <laughs> I'm sure not a day goes by where you don't think about it. Every day. Yeah, I got a lot of photos up in my uh, room of Shad. I have so many photos of uh, Shad in my phone. I'm scrolling. It's like, I, yeah, I can't get away from him. But it's a good thing, though. Yeah. 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 So when, like, in your everyday life, what are the memories that come to mind? Um, Shad, well, like, I don't know if a lot of people don't know. Like, me and Shad were, like, best friends. We were, like, brothers. You know, we were pretty much, like, family. Like, I spent a few Thanksgiving with him and his family. Um, if I had an issue, financial problem, or if I had just like personal problems, you know, he was there. You know, he he was always there for me. Um, there was a there was a. I remember when I was going through my uh, separation with my with my ex wife, and you know, he could tell. You know, we've been around each other for so long. We we just know when something's wrong. And I was trying to hold it in, but he got it out of me. And one one time we went to the gym. We was about to go to the gym, and I was just out of it. I couldn't couldn't work out. He was like, "Come on, let's go, go. We're not working out right now." He was like, your head is not in the game right mm. now. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And he, I didn't know what he was taking. He was like, we're going to the beach. He went to the beach, and he was like, let it out. I'm like, let what out? He was like, let it out. Talk to me. We talked, and then we had like a rocky moment. We started jogging, <laughs> and, then he was, and then he started getting, he ran in front of me, and he just started, uh, he was like, come on, run. I want you to run. I started running. He said, faster, faster. And, like, and then he started uh, talking to me about you, what are you going to do? You're going to make her, like, trying to, like, you're going to move forward. You're not going to let that stop you. And he started getting in my head. And then I, like, he, I can't remember what he triggered, triggered, but I broke down and started crying. And then I stopped. And I was like, he acknowledged that I was crazy. Like, it's going to be all right. Good. You're going to move forward. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And then like, all right, just because you're crying doesn't mean you can stop. <laughs> you stop running. He was like, <laughs> we kept running. And I let it all out on the beach. And we just sat there. And we, uh, we stared into the ocean. We just talked. And that's the time. We had a lot of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had Mark Kopani, uh, Mohammed Hassan, on the show recently, mm -hmm. who was working with Shad on the graphic novel. Oh, yeah, Assassin's Son. Assassin's, yeah. Right, Assassin's Son. And, and he was saying the thing he loved about Shad was that if Shad said he was going to do something... He did it. He did it. No matter yeah. how, how crazy... How crazy. Yes. yes. That's Shad, yeah. No matter how big the dream was, you knew he was going to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. That was Shad, exactly. Wow. <laughs> so where, how did you find out the news that he was missing? His, his uh, wife called me the night. It was Sunday. I was, I was getting ready to go to bed. And um, his, uh, he, Shad's phone called me. It said, it said Shad. And then I'm like, what do you want? Like, I'm expecting it to be Shad. And yeah. it's his wife. He's like, hey, Jason, this is um, Siliana. Um, we can't find Shad. And I'm like, I'm automatically thinking it's a rib. It's a joke. Like, what do you mean you can't find Shad? Like, he's big. Seven, like, how do you, like... Like he's oh we um we lost him while we were on the beach, and I'm like you have his phone. So I, I'm thinking it's a rib. I'm gonna go along with it. I like she's like can you help me find him? Like yeah, let me go sharp. I'll be over there. I'll come help you find him. And I'm like I'm, I need to just prepare myself because I know he's because we me and Shad have a playful like we like right now I'm like cool, but when I'm with Shad, we both let out like a childhood like a child like. <laughs> 
we just become children. I don't know. We just become very immature and we just have fun and then we're back to being. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 You could turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, let me just prepare myself. He's going to pop out of somewhere, bear hug me and throw me in the sand or throw me in the ocean and record it and put it on. I'm like, I'm just preparing myself. And then when I get to um, Shad's house, I meet his wife in car and I meet his wife and um, his son in the car and she had like flashlights. I'm like, yeah. I was like, you need like flashlights. What do you need flashlights for? To look for Shad. And I'm like, now nah, I'm, I'm getting like scared. Like, what do you mean we going on the beach to look for? I'm like, where are we looking for him? And his, his son was in the car, so she's like, I can't tell you right now. Like, so we yeah. got to the beach, and then she told me the whole breakdown. And I'm like, and then that's, I think after like an hour or two of uh, walking on the beach in Santa Monica, I kind of came to, what do you call it? Um, like, yeah, I think he's gone. That's like, I came to like, Okay, yeah. this is... Like you accepted it. Yeah, I accepted it right there. And I couldn't cry or break down right there because his, his wife and son was there, so I had to be strong for them. And I was like, and the, from what she told me, the story that she told me, I was like, he, he got washed up. In, but I couldn't tell her that. I had to be there. She wanted the to look. Tide. Yeah, we were there till midnight, and I'm on the beach with a flashlight looking. I don't know what I'm looking for. Am I looking in the ocean? Am I looking on the broadwalk? Like, yeah. I didn't want to ask because it's like... <laughs> I was just there for for more like for support, and we were there till midnight, and it was started getting cold. I'm like, um, we could try again. Let's do it again tomorrow. But I kind of yeah. accepted it right there. How quickly did the police join in the search? That was the next day, but <clears throat> the day that it happened in the afternoon, they had helicopters. They had, from what I heard, they had they had the whole the, the, the works looking looking out for Shad, but they had yeah. to call it off at sunset because can't see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> I've heard some people say that you know Shad should w w receive the Warriors Award this year. He definitely should. If um, um, I don't know what, what's a bigger heroic act than putting your life on the line, you know, for for his son. I, and, but honestly, he would have did it for if it was another child. If it was probably me, he probably would have did the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt he would have. Yeah. <laughs> But like, do you think his his was his relationship with WWE good enough that he would be considered for something like that? I believe so because we went backstage a couple of times. Yeah, um, we talked to um, the head of talent relations, and you know they were like, they just, "We have an open door. We love to. You guys look great. We would love to have you guys back." And you know there was some talks about you know crime time coming back. You know they told us the door is always open. You know we just gotta you know make sure it's the right fit. And we were like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. And you know nothing nothing. Uh, materialized, but there were talks. We don't we, we don't know what would ha what would happen if we if Shad was still here today. We don't know, but yeah, yeah there was definitely uh, talks of bringing Crime Time back. Why was why did Crime Time even leave? Um, first we got we split up. We wanted to you know venture yeah. off and do our singles thing, yeah. and uh, Shad got released, I believe, in two thousand eleven. I believe eleven or twelve, and I stayed with the company until two thousand. 14. Yeah. So I did the singles thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I was it just a, a budget thing? Was that what it was? With uh with getting released? Oh, I I don't I never know what what they release people for any, <laughs> for anything. They, oh, uh, uh creative couldn't come up with anything for you, so we're going to it's like that's their excuse, but Right. Yeah. So you never know with them or what's going on behind the scenes, the politics. I know I was on the contract for for a while. I was off of TV for like a year or so, so it was like I kind of was like in the back of my head. I'm like I'm kind of like expecting it. Like okay, I haven't been on TV in a while. Um, they haven't mentioned me. I'm probably gonna get released. But my contract was up. I wasn't. My contract was up. I think in another three months. So they didn't have to release me. They just gonna have my <laughs> contract run up. <laughs> right. But I didn't think I didn't I didn't, I didn't have my heart set on signing back though. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you yeah. wanted to do different things. Yeah, yeah. How how much would you say Crime Time evolved from when you guys debuted uh -huh. to when you guys split up? Um, no, when we split up, it was probably pretty much the same thing. We were just more experienced, more confident in the ring. And um, I watched your first entrance as Crime Time, and it was so like charismatic. Yeah, it was you so see my confident. chain pop off. <laughs> I was your, so hyped. Hat popped off. Yeah, up, everything dude. flew. My chain broke off. My hat <laughs> flew off. I was on two Red Bulls in the Staples Center. I was. <laughs> like some people, like when they debut, they're like nervous. I was anxious. So like, let me get them. Let me get out there. I need to show them. I'm going to show them what I got. Yeah, I was hyped. <laughs> so you'd say that the, you guys just got more confident with what you did. Yeah, more experience. We had more uh, double team moves in our arsenal. We just perfected our, our craft. What about, the, what about character wise? 
character wise, it was pretty much the same. Um, we, I think we might have toned it down just a little bit more because when we first started, we were off. We, they wanted like over the top, and we were like, "All right, we'll give you over the top." And it, 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 might, it was some of it was very offensive, but uh, that's what they wanted, so we had to give them what they want. <laughs> I don't know if that gimmick would work in the current landscape. Absolutely not. Not in 2020. WWE. Not with not with Twitter right now. No, you yeah. Twitter will cancel you. <laughs> yeah. Although, but I also feel like they could get behind something else that you guys were doing. Well, me and Shadden, me and Shadden together uh, is just a great pairing. That's magic. Uh, our chemistry. We don't, yeah. They could have just called the Shad Gaspard and JTG and our yeah. personalities alone and our chemistry on camera, even off camera, it's, it's amazing. So where did you get some of the influence for the segments you guys were doing? Oh, we got a lot of our influence from stuff that we grew up, our childhood, uh, childhood memories, childhood shows. Um, me and Shad grew up on In Living Color, the, the, the Wayne's Brothers, yeah. and the Homeboy Shopping Network. We just straight up stole that and made, and made it our own. Um, <laughs> uh, what else did we grow up? Uh, it was another show that we... Um, Maybe a little bit of Dave Wayne's, Chappelle in there? Dave Chappelle, absolutely. That's exactly what Vince McMahon wanted, because at that time, Dave Chappelle was really uh, big in pop culture, and he wanted like Dave Chappelle-type skits. Mm. So that was one of his requests, and we, we delivered. Um, and there was another show, even the Wayne's Brothers, the Wayne's Brothers that used to come on, um, yeah. on well, the different channels, but on the Warner, the Warner Brothers, the WB. Yeah. We took, we took a lot of stuff from there, too. Yep. <laughs> oh, so, well, for you growing up was like the go-to sketch that you watched, you know, a dozen times, a hundred times. Oh, whatever. the Homeboy Shopping Network was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. Who were some of your favorite actors growing up? Oh, we also took... Me and Shab, we also took, uh, Bernie Mac was one of my favorite comedians. Yeah, okay. And he also, uh, our catchphrase that got us over and sold thousands of t-shirts and, uh, and, and uh, merchandise was uh, money, money. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, Shad got that, and he did it off the whim, too. He got that from Bernie Mac from um, the Players Club. Like, uh, he found out that, uh, who was it? Who was coming to, who came to the club? I think it was Luke. He was like, hey, we have Luke in the club. Luke? Oh, and he pushed the red button for all the strippers to come out because they there's a celebrity coming out. He's like, money, money, yeah, yeah. And Shad remembered that. And I remember we were we were on set. We was doing one of our vignettes for WWE, and then he we, we pushed. It was the, the ATM scene, and uh, we took the money from the guy we just robbed. And Shad just started singing money, and I went along with it, and. We kept doing it and it became our catchphrase. <laughs> wow. I, I, I love hearing these stories when something happens completely by accident. Yeah, we, I never knew that would have been our catchphrase. But yeah. there were also so many times where you guys would like join in, at the, like finish each other's sentences. Because we hang around each other so much. Yeah, we would just finish each other's sentences. I know what he was thinking. Like, me and Shad had so many inside jokes. Like, there would be points where we were in a serious setting, but if I knew if I looked at him, We'd have bust out laughing. So I had a, you ever had that relationship with, yeah, with your course. best friend? Yeah. And you're kind of like trying to hold it together? You want to look at him, but you know if you look at him, you're going to lose it. And it's like, we can't do this right now. We're in a serious meeting. And then we'll go, like, once we take off and we make eye contact, we just, oh, you heard what he said, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the person or maybe group of people that when you saw it on the script, you're like, Crime Time's going to do a segment with that them? No way. What do you mean? Like, you guys did stuff with DX. Yes, that's uh, well, that yes. was probably a big one, right? That was a big one. I was kind of blown away, like, wow, they okay, cool. And I thought they were gonna be like strict and stick to the script and like be so like professional, like we gotta stick to the script and we got to hit our cue. We just had fun on camera. That was so, one. So of, that was one take. No, actually, it wasn't one take because uh, I don't want to put <laughs> say who say who messed up, but somebody uh, it wasn't Shad and I. Uh, they um. They broke character and started laughing in the, in the uh, during during the vignette, and we had to do it over again. Yeah, that means you're doing a good job. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it wow. is. Wow. <laughs> when you look back at your WWE career, what are some of the matches that you're most proud of? I'm definitely proud of our tag team match, our unified uh, the tag team match we had at the Staples Center at SummerSlam. It was a uh, Chris Jericho and Big Show Jericho versus Crime Time. We didn't win, but the fact that they allowed uh, Shad and I to wrestle um, Jericho for the titles on a big pay per view like SummerSlam, yeah. like they, they they put some trust into us. Like, okay, can these boys, you know, 
legitimately like make it like look like a contest. Yeah, yeah. And we we held our own, and we you know we stepped we stepped up to the plate, and we had a, an amazing match. I watched that back sometimes, like because I'm like, so proud of it. Yeah. And it was also a match that we had. It was in uh, I believe it was in Rhode Island. And it was the first time I ever heard uh, the the phrase in the wrestling business called the Road Warrior Pop. I don't know if you if you ever heard of yeah. that. I had I never never heard of it. I never heard of it. Um, it we sh- uh, it was um, Crime Time versus Jericho, Show, and we were like the semi main event. We we're in the main event, but we were the semi main event for the titles. And the crowd, like after that match ended, the crowd. Was, we want crime time, crime time, crime. They were stomping their feet, crime time, crime. I'm like, wow, like the building is like going, they wanted crime time. I never got, we never got that response. I mean, the people cheered for us and pop, but this, the, the arena going crazy. Yeah. It was like, it kind of, I got goose, I'm getting goose, yeah, I'm thinking see, about yeah. it. And Chris Jericho came up and was like, wow, look at you guys are over, huh? You got getting that road warrior pop. And it's like, they didn't even announce that we were about to wrestle. It was like, they just figured that crime time haven't wrestled yet. Yeah. And the main event is, John Cena, so and so, so they yeah. must be coming out, and then they anticipated it, and they started chanting and banging, stomping their feet for crime wow. time, and that was like an amazing feeling. Wow! So after you left WWE, uh-huh. you wrote a few books. Yeah, I wrote two books. Yeah, they weren't supposed to be two books. It was supposed to be one book. But the first book was so popular. It was so good. It was, became an instant cult classic. Um, I had to write a second one. But it's basically about how to avoid heat. How to avoid heat, staying out of trouble. Because <laughs> I, me and Shad got into a lot of trouble. You know, being 21, Shad was, probably, was 23, um, on the road. Um, yeah. Your financial situation changes. You're on TV now. Um, MySpace was popping at the time. It's, it's a lot, you know, for a 21, you know, 21-year-old. And going on the road and just, you know... Adapting to this this new this new life, yeah, you got to get into a, tr- a lot of trouble. Who would who did you have the most heat with? Um, you gotta read the book, man. <laughs> you gotta read the book. I'm trying to, yeah, let people get a little, little teaser. Yeah, you know, I got like uh, I got into a trouble with a with a veteran, you know, a Hall of Famer. Um, he he accused me of stealing his uh, what do you call it? Uh, taunt. You know, you know when you you watch my first uh, match on um. With me and Shad's debut match, and when I came out, I was just hyped. My hands were all over the place. Yeah. As you can see, I, my chain fell off, and I was just like in my zone. Yeah. I'm not even thinking. And then I have my match, and then uh, after the match, we had a segment with Booker T. It went great. Um, and then my day, I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, life is great right now. I just performed. Li- I, just, I did a live. Uh, had a live match. It went great at Staples Center, L.A. Um, I wasn't living in LA at the time. I was living in, still living in Kentucky. So LA to me was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then um, I just did a backstage segment with Booker T and Charmel, King Booker. <laughs> <laughs> and that went great. Everybody loved it. I'm on cloud nine, like life is great. And then um, a certain Hall of Famer comes up to me and said, I told you already uh, about your hand gestures and keeping in mind. And he just belittles me in front of like, oh. I'm like, I was like, it just got, it just, I'm on, I'm on like, yeah, yeah, cloud. I'm just up there, and that just brought right back down. I just like, don't, I got humbled real quick. Like, I didn't, uh, what? right, what? <laughs> what, 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 and then uh, I let some time. I like, you know, I coomed. I couldn't. What I'm gonna do? I'm the new guy. That you think I'm gonna yell at this, say something back to this Hall of Famer? All I could do is like, in my head, I'm like, he's wrong. Like, but I'm gonna, you know, be the professional, apologize, and you know, yeah. it won't happen again. So I was very, I couldn't come out. I waited some waited for some time to pass by before you know I could you know let loose again, but I had to be on my p's and q's. Now, did you get heat for writing the book about heat? Absolutely, of course I did. <laughs> That's um, so ironic. Like I'm kind of like immune to heat right now. Like I don't care. It's like I'm not gonna do stuff to intentionally get heat, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be J to God. I'm gonna be JTG. You know, I'm, I have a lot of personality. I have a lot of uh, charisma, and and I'm very creative. So. You you give me a Twitter or uh, uh, Instagram account. You know, my, my goal is not to be malicious. I'm just sure. going to have fun. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you go on my Instagram right now, JTG121084, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of posts up there, you know, uh, just being petty and having fun, though. You know, um, I'm doing it to, you know, create awareness. <laughs> you, well, you just had a post <laughs> yeah. where you were wearing the TNT title. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was, I was, in, I was on the toilet and, and, and I was like... <laughs> I saw the picture of the title, and it looks so... It, the, the TNT, I got to give it to him. It looks beautiful. And um, 
you know, I, I fixed it up. You know, I docked it up a little bit. And I put it on my waist. I thought it looked, the picture looked great on me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I like to, I love the Back to the Future movie. That's one of my top. That's in my top five. It's my favorite movie of all time. And I, you know, my language. <laughs> and then I made it to the Back to the Future quote, a quote, and it fit right in. You know, roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> now this, this roads is spelled like Cody Rhodes. Yeah, you know, if that's what you, you, you know, you put two to two well, together. I'm just you know? reading it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how it was read. Nah, but I, um, I work Cody a lot. You know. Uh, well, crime time and legacy. So we have a, a a great relationship. We haven't spoken in in years, but I'm pretty sure if, you know when I see Cody, if I ever see Cody, we'll pick up right where we left off. You know, we're always cool. We never had any uh, um, like serious disagreements or any um, bad fallout. So we, we were always cool. So is AEW something that you'd like to? We'll see. You know, my, my, right now, you know, money, I'm in a business, I'm in a business mode right now. It's got to yeah. fit my, um, my vision, but especially the, financially. But at the same time, you probably only have so many years of wrestling left. Yeah, I'm young and I, I'm, I'm young. I got into the business at, I started training when I, on my 18th birthday, I'll never forget. Um, I got signed when I was 21 and I just have, at my age, I'm like, very well experienced. Yeah, of course. And um, I'm 35. So I want to say 40 or 45. I don't know. But right now, my body is great. I take care of it. Um, very health conscious. I'm in the best shape of my life. And I'm just, you know. Giant arms. Giant arms, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I, I feel like you made this post kind of like putting it out as a feeler. Like. Yeah, yeah, put it out there. You know, you yeah. got, sometimes you got to put it out to the universe and see what comes back, you know. Did just, you get any heat for that? I don't know. Huh. Yeah. Right. yeah. We'll what, see. What was the reaction from fans? Oh, fans loved it. <laughs> oh, fans are just egging it on. They, they want to see the match. You know, yeah. they, they want to see the new JT, new, new uh, improved JT, uh, JTG on, on television. Yeah. You know, they see my videos on, um, on uh, social media for my indie matches and they're blown away. Like, this guy, why is he not on TV? You know, I'm just saying what they're saying. They're like, yeah. he looks great. He's in, he's in, he's, he looks like a million bucks. He has a great look. He's marketable. He could he could he could work not just wrestle you know how to work yeah. you know he's good on the mic why is this guy not on television yeah I don't know that's I'm not that's not like my main I have a whole bunch of stuff going on if it happens I get the call and the numbers are right and I'm a I'm a great long term investment <laughs> <laughs> so for people who maybe haven't seen you since you left WWE uh -huh. how different is Jay the God versus just two gangster just two gangster well i had to switch the gear up you know i had to switch the style okay, up on them yeah um so right now i'm wearing the uh i had to I had the although i love my timberland boots i had to hang them up um <laughs> i got the wrestling boots now i have the the trunks um jtg you know he had cornrows he had grills the jewelry now i'm still i'm still i'm still fly you know i still incorporate it into my entrance and my and my swagger but i'm, I'm more serious right now mm. and i'm probably uh 30 pounds heavy <laughs> <laughs> and you got a great beard thank you thank you for those i'm glad you asked for those inquiring about a sexy beard you can go to sexy as hell beardcare.com sahbeardcare.com i have my own uh beard care line congratulations thank you over about 30 30 cents you could choose from there's beard and body care so, you know, before I go out, I make sure my, I have the matching beard scent and body scent. Oh. Great combination, beard and body. Where did you come up with this idea? I came with the idea because I had my own little concoction for my beard. And I'm like, and everybody, again, every time someone, I keep getting the same, I think that's the universe where you're talking to me. Like, I keep getting questions. Yo, man, your beard grew kind of quick. They just see me in the gym. Yeah. Your beard grew quick. I just saw you like a month ago and your beard was at a certain, now it's grown. It's like thick, it's full, it's shiny. What do you do? And I'm like... I told them that I'm like, you know what? I need to start. I need to bottle this up and sell it. And then I, um, I added the sense to it. Like you, you just can't sell like without my, <laughs> they, <laughs> what I was doing with my beard. Yeah. Just sell it. Um, so I started looking into um, different scents, all natural. Everything's organic, and um, it's been a hit. And I'm wow. selling beard and body uh, uh, butter and oil. <laughs> did and, did and, you have any idea that like you wanted to start your own business? Um, I always had an entrepreneur mindset. Um, but I didn't know it just kind of happened. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of happened. And I just, I do, I go, I went with the flow. And now you've got a bunch of stuff going on. I have a bunch of, yeah, it's coming on. It's going to be, uh, hopefully by next Who month. Who needs wrestling anymore? <laughs> you got all this other stuff. Exactly. I, like wrestling for me is fun. It's not my bread and butter. Wrestling, I love wrestling. That's my, I grew up, I remember since I was the age of two, 
um, me and my family enjoying wrestling, so it's always been a part of my life, like heavy, like yeah. When you like when when you ask a family member or my best friends growing up, like first thing that comes to mind when you think of Jason, wrestling. He's like always into wrestling. Yeah. Oh, who did you love growing up? Um, I went through different phases of my okay. life. So of Which course I went through the as a kid, like a toddler, as a kid, I went through my Hulk Hogan phase. Sure. Uh, Hulk too. Hogan bandana and the, the Hogan yellow hand with the red right writing. Um, and then after Hogan, it went. I went to my uh, Bret Hart phase, big Bret Hart fan, yeah. and then I went from Bret Hart to The Rock. Okay. If you go on my yeah. Instagram, you can see me impersonating The Rock as a teenager, um, and 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 rock bottoming, rock bottoming my uh, cousin through an ironing board. <laughs> you can check that out. And then after, and then after that, it, it, after The Rock, it would be, I was a big Jeff Hardy fan, RVD fan. Then you got signed. And then yeah, and then I got signed. <laughs> you're a big JTG fan. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm a JTG fat, crime time fat, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so when you were growing up, were there African American wrestlers that you felt you could look up to? Um, watching WWE, there weren't too many. Like I, I loved Ahmed Johnson, and then he disappeared. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, there wasn't, there weren't a ton. Yeah, like Coco that. Beware, I made it, I yeah. Guess. But the, for the to make it to that top level to be seen as like a WWE champion, yeah, I was like. Ahmed Johnson is that guy. He's because yeah. he became he's not a champion. I'm like his 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 entrance rocked. His, he had charisma. Yeah, and then he just I don't know what he just faded away. <laughs> but then you and Shad, I feel like were able to be that example for young African Americans. Yeah. Well, oh, Booker T when Booker T came sure. on the scene. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I I wasn't uh, growing up. I didn't watch uh, especially being on the East Coast. Yeah, Harlem Heat. Yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't watch. Um, well, I didn't I didn't watch a lot of WCW or any other wrestling promotion. It was just like strictly. WWE in my house. <laughs> I didn't. I said it started watching WCW until the you know the the um the wars, yeah. the Monday Night Wars, yeah. and then I had to do an OVW. We studied a lot of uh, tapes from the Crockett from like from all over. So yeah. then, like, I'm sure you guys got a ton of messages from kids that were like, "We never saw a tag team like you guys." Yeah. Oh yeah. We got my space was probably my when I come home from the road and. Um, relax. I will check my MySpace messages, my and space. <laughs> and they were like, "Yo, what you doing? You know, you know, representing hip hop and you know, representing our culture. You know, there was also some negative things like that. Oh, you're embarrassment and blah blah. But that doesn't stick in my head. I remember the positive uh, yeah. messages that that I got. A, I got a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I guess there would be people that would be like, "You guys are like playing into a stereotype." Yeah, exactly. I understand. I, I get it. But you know, in the rest, you know, but I also understand the wrestling business. You have to have a gimmick. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is that still part of your gimmick now? Um, not no, absolutely not. Um, like with Shad and I, we were the they, we since we we were we were bad guys. No, we were good guys doing bad guy stuff yeah. like Robin Hood. You know, we'll take from the uh, the the, uh, the, the rich, rich yeah. and give to the boy. Like we'll take from superstars and we sell it to the fans. You know, <laughs> we will auction it off. Did those fans actually get to keep those things? Yeah, we got real yeah. money. <laughs> oh yeah, and you got to keep the money. We got to keep I the money. I always wondered that. Yeah, we kept the money. <laughs> we worked hard for that money. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. I remember we auctioned off um, uh, Lillian Garcia's uh, ring ringside seat because that was um, we had it. that was the first time at Madison Square Garden. I performed at Madison Square Garden. My mom actually got to see me perform at MSG, which was like another thing that sticks out in my career, like being in MSG where I grew up going to. Yeah. And uh, we did an auction. And um, we took Lillian's seat right from underneath her, signed it, and somebody in the front row paid like 300 bucks for it. And me and Shad we went out to dinner that night. <laughs> <laughs> Had a big day. We took care of it. We paid for the whole bill. Our family was there. Yeah. <laughs> was that the most that a fan gave you for any of those crime time gimmicks? Um, probably not. We, we made a lot of money with those auctions, but, I can't, but that is... night stood out because it was like, yeah, you paid three. Well, I guess. Why not? Wow! Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe you guys actually kept the money. One time we didn't kept we didn't keep the okay. money. One, one time, we, time, one time it was Akon. We sold something to Akon, and he 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 started. I think he wanted to show off. He started putting out about a bunch of hundreds, and we're like, "Oh, we took it." We're like, "I wonder if we get to keep this." And then he came backstage. He's like, "All right, come on, give me money." Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, this right. was all part of the show. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, you gotta have that back over. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't want to write this off. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> he definitely could have. So, what what's the rest of this year have in store for you? A lot more indie shows, um, my projects, the um, my um, my biceps book, my bicep East, <laughs> my biceps uh, fitness book. Uh, let me get the name of it real quick. Hold on, uh, the newbie's guide to big biceps. There it is. So easy. 
A child could do it. <laughs> I'm making it very easy for uh, for, for new uh, gym goers. That we got Talking Shop of Mania Two. Talking Shop Mania Two. I'm also um, in a few weeks. I, I can't say the get into too much detail, but I'm also filming uh, filming a trailer for a movie. This is um, great. And uh, yeah, I got a, a bunch of stuff going on. Some stuff I can't really get too much in detail yeah. in, but yeah. I'm, why is Why is LA home for you now? I love LA. I remember when Me I because I have a lot of history here. I uh, I debuted here, um, had my best match here. And um, I just remember visiting, and I'm like, this place feels like home. I like, I didn't. And then when I first moved here, and I still do, I still get it. Like when I'm when I'm away from LA for like for a few days, I get homesick, and I like, I want to go. I'm ready to go home. Like mm. I, I'm, I'm like, LA has this weird love hate relationship. People okay. either love it, uh -huh. like you're talking about, yeah, or they, they hate can't it. stand it. I love it here. I, this is home, and. Uh, I mean, I love New York too. That's home too. But see, I'm I'm, I'm the opposite on New York. Like, yeah, New York's good for like a weekend. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I am. New York is home, but is like to, right now, like New York is good for like three, four days most, and I'm in, ready to come home in the spring, summer, or fall. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do those winters anymore. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we've become spoiled, man. Yes, I'm very spoiled. Like I'm wearing a tank top now, and it's, we're, we're in October. <laughs> I, I like to end every interview by asking you, what are three things that you're grateful for? right now oh i'm grateful i definitely gotta say i'm grateful for my uh, my health um uh my career and the direction that i'm going and you know that i had shad in my life that's definitely what i'm grateful for because i wouldn't have be where i am today if it wasn't for shad and i wouldn't have this mindset i wouldn't you know he taught me how to work out i wouldn't have these arms if it wasn't for him <laughs> right yeah. back to the arms. right back to the arms <laughs> but yeah definitely uh, so shad uh, having shad in my life my health and the direction my life is going, going. Shad's touched so many people's lives. Absolutely, yes. It's, it's amazing. That it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if you had a five-minute interaction with him, uh -huh. or you know, you've been his friend, you know, yeah, a lifetime. Your whole life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I'm excited to see what the rest of the year has in store for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. 2020 has been rough, but um, we're we're all we're, we're making getting, it. It's only getting better. It's only getting better. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you for having me, man. <clears throat> Cheer. Money, money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So thanks for hanging out with us for the first interview that I've done from my house, or at least the first interview that I've done from my new house here. Though I feel like I kind of should have cleaned up a little bit. There's just some things. That's a scrub daddy. That orange thing there is a scrub daddy, which is, man, one of the greatest inventions of all time. I think there's real, two real takeaways from this interview. Number one, JTG's arms are enormous. They really are. Number two, Shad touched the lives of every single person that he came into contact with. And it would be so mind-blowing if he is not considered for WWE's Warrior Award. I mean, seriously, does it get any more heroic than that? I mean, come on. But thank you for hanging out with JTG and I during this interview. I'm so glad that Talking, Talking Shopamania 2 was able to bring us together. And if you haven't seen the ridiculousness that is Talking Shop of Mania 2. I encourage you to go find this on Fight TV. It's, man, it's something else. It's amazing, but boy, it's just, it's something else. <laughs>